Hey, what's up? Um, so I want to do a video um, about this blog post that I'm doing. Um, and the blog post is about an article that um, is kind of reviewing, not a really kind of technical review, but just kind of an overview um, of a study that was done in which researchers compared um, short duration high intensity exercise to longer duration uh, lower intensity exercise and the effect on blood glucose levels. Um, so, you know, I read the articles. Um, I have not read a hard copy of the study itself, uh, but, you know, reading through the article, the conclusions that were drawn, at least how they were described in the article, made sense to me. And so I'm writing a blog post kind of explaining um, or giving a general overview of the mechanisms um, by which the conclusions uh, make sense to me. Um, and so I kind of want to draw that out in color um, and you know, as a schematic, uh, so you, you may be able to better understand what I'm talking about, um, or at least better visualize it. Um, and then over the course of many, many blog posts, I'm gonna go into each and every mechanism in great detail, um, or at least you know, the detail that I am you know, understand it to. Um, and then, so we'll get into all those blog posts all throughout the summer um, and all those mechanisms. Okay, so what we're talking about is muscle contraction to start. So, um, and just for reference, uh, the red marker is going to indicate um, an inhibition of something. A blue marker is going to indicate a production of something, and a green marker is going to indicate an activation of something. So muscle contraction produces ADP. So when muscle contraction happens, we'll say there'll be an increase in ADP. This increase in ADP production will lead to an increase in AMP production. An increase in AMP production will lead to an increase in the activation of AMPPK. This will lead to this increase in the activation of AMPPK will lead to an increase in the inhibition of AS160 and TBC1B1. So an increase in the inhibition of AS160 and TBC1B1 will lead to an increase in the activation of GLUT4, which is a protein that transports glucose from the blood into the muscle cell, um, which means an increase in glucose transport, um, either inhibition or activation or production, so I'm going to do it in black, increase in glucose transport. Transport into muscle which means a decrease in glucose in the blood. So, this is kind of what I described in words um, in my blog post, but I wanted to do it a visual, kind of schematic in color, it might help you um, understand better than just the words on the screen. But I think what's important here is that if you increase muscle contraction, all of these ramp up as well. Um, which means you have a greater 
decline in glucose in the blood, um, which is why the conclusions that were drawn that were shorter duration, higher intensity uh, bouts of exercise um, led to decreased glucose levels three hours after a meal. That, that conclusion makes sense to me for these reasons. And I'm gonna go into each and every one of these mechanisms, actually starting with action potential propagation and why that matters for ADP production and fast twitch for slow twitch fibers and how it's different in each um, all throughout the summer. We're gonna work our way step by step all the way through this um, and even talk about why it was important that it was post-meal, um, or sorry, that the exercise was pre-meal versus post-meal and, and talking about the differences as far as that. Um, so, I got one other thing to say, but I'm blanking out on it. So clearly it wasn't important. But if you want to read the post, check out selfmadefitness.com um, and go through the archives for going there. I'll post a uh, link to that in the description below. And I'll post a link to the article that I'm refer referencing in the description below. Um, it's gonna bug me that I can't remember that last thing. It'll come to me eventually. I'll write that in the description below too. Awesome.